Welcome to Solar Tech Talk, where we nerd out about solar energy, solar policy, and all the related technology. I'm Aaron Bingham, product manager at Baywa RE. And I'm Jason Burnett, technical sales support. How, how have you been? What's what's going on in your world? Uh, I've been doing pretty good, you know, outside the the grind of the of the solar coaster, right? Like I've been trying to get out more locally and play some music out in public. So that's been a, a interesting, nerve wracking thing. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, it, it's about awesome. like recording these sometimes. No. Yeah, right. <laughs> How about but yourself? I've, I've seen you play, you're pretty talented. So I'm sure it's yeah. a lot of fun. I, I've had a pretty exciting summer. Not too long ago, I had solar modules installed on my home, which is a, a big, you know, life goal accomplishment for me. I've been in the solar industry for 15 years now, and I've never lived in a place where my electrons were coming from the sun. And now I do. Nice. So I'm super excited about that. We've got energy kind of powering this podcast right now. So <laughs> that's, that's really fun. We may um, have to change the name. Solar Powered Tech Talk, right? There we go. <laughs> so today uh, we have a really exciting couple of guests joining us. We've got um, Cam Ciota. He's a senior product manager for the Q Home ESS solution from Q Cells, and Jeff Gill, who is a channel strategy uh, development manager over at Q Cells as well. Um, and they're here to talk to us, as you may have guessed from Cam's role about the Q Home ESS solution that recently launched. Um, we, we recently brought this product into stock. We're really excited about some of its features and modularity. And um, it's, it's a great conversation that we had with them. It's a little bit longer, so we wanted to jump right into it. Yeah, let's dive in. Great, uh, thank you, Aaron. Good morning. And uh, you know, my name is Cam Sihoda, and uh, I am a senior product manager on the energy storage uh, solutions side of the business. We uh, look at products from you know, origination, defining, discovering, developing, and then designing all the way through to you know, deployment, releasing them to the market for, for the North American market. And I'm Jeff Gill. I'm a channel strategy development manager here at QCells. I, uh, I work in the channel marketing department specifically, work a lot with our distributor partners, et cetera. And yeah, happy to, uh, happy to be here. So Jeff, uh, could you give us a, a quick introduction uh, to, to QCells as a company? Sure. Uh, QCells was founded in 1999 in Germany, where we still have uh, our R&D base. Uh, so our global headquarters for research and development is uh, in, still in Germany. Um, it was bought in 2012 by the Hanwha Group. And since then, we've gone on to establish manufacturing bases in Dalton, Georgia, um, so in, in Georgia, Malaysia, and, and Korea, of course. But uh, we've gone a long way since there in terms of becoming a, uh, a full energy solution provider as well. As, as anyone hearing your introduction would guess, we're here today to talk a little bit more about Q-Cells. Everybody knows the brand as a module manufacturer. You guys make fantastic modules. Um, but tell us a little bit about uh, your journey to providing energy storage solutions and how that fits in with your strategy overall. QCells is transitioning into being a complete energy solution provider. And what that means is, you know, we already have utility, we have commercial and industrial, we have residential solar, but we also want to develop our, our battery off offering and our home energy solution offering. And uh, we, we actually do have uh, commercial uh, energy storage as well. We have our company Jelly, um, which makes the, uh, the software for uh, commercial energy storage for uh, CNI projects. So yeah, just the whole company is transitioning into energy storage because that's where the future is going. And I might add to that, Jeff. Um, you know, as for example, what we see happening is you know as more solar and battery storage is being put on the grid. You know, obviously utilities have their requirements and. There's new business opportunities that are coming into play. For example, you know how to aggregate all these residential storage systems and help support the grid and uh, things like VPP, you know, virtual power plants, and uh, you know a lot of creative, uh, you know, new opportunities are coming. So you know, QCells is looking at all of that. And uh, as Jeff pointed out, to become a complete energy solutions provider, we need to go beyond just providing equipment, you know, obviously beyond modules, but also beyond inverters and batteries. So we we have a whole team 
you know, with an R&D center here in uh, Silicon Valley in, in the U.S., uh, we're looking at a lot of things, uh, you know, from modules all the way through to the grid. Yeah, that's that's fantastic info, guys. Um, uh, Cam, what's uh, could you give us a kind of a high level introduction to the the new ESS solution and, and Q Home Core? Absolutely, Jason. Uh, very excited to be sharing this with you. You know, when we started the development of uh, this uh, residential energy storage system, uh, we kind of took a look at what's out there and. You know, a lot of the market is going into retrofit applications with uh, what we call an AC battery. You know, for example, uh, a Tesla or, you know, some of these systems out there, you know, you're, you're basically buying a battery that's AC coupled to existing sites. So that's great for maybe, you know, retrofit applications, but not so great for, you know, new sites where you want to have a, a complete system approach. So, so we, we wanted to offer uh, a complete system solution where we can provide, you know, not only the inverter and the battery, but also take it to the module level and provide, you know, the PV module, the MLPE for rapid shutdown or optimization, the inverter, the battery, the hub that brings it all together and go from small systems to large systems. And then, um, you know, also tie in, uh, you know, service and support, application engineering support. Uh, so that was one of the visions. Secondly was to make this extremely flexible. So you could have a system that could be deployed for new, new sites, existing sites, indoor, outdoor, um, you know, whether it's PV only or, uh, you know, with the grid support uh, or backup, you know, a lot of different applications. And third, we wanted to make the installation really simple. So those are the objectives, you know, complete solution, uh, a lot of flexibility, and uh, really easy to work with. Yeah, makes a lot of sense that you would want to take that approach to kind of protect the QCells brand. You guys have built a really solid reputation around the quality of your modules, the service you provide, you have a fantastic sales team. And so we're, we're very excited to see you um, applying that same strategy, that same level of uh, care to the ESS launch. Um, yeah, so, so Aaron, if I may just add a little more. Like, for example, if we just take a look at those three components, in, in order to offer a complete system, we have a 7.6 kilowatt inverter. The battery can scale from 10 kilowatt hours to 20 kilowatt hours in a single battery cabinet. And then you can parallel four of those systems. So you can actually go all the way up to 80 kilowatt hours. And so you've got a lot of flexibility in terms of sizing, you know, for small homes, for large homes or doing, for example, partial home backup or whole home backup. And then the product itself, in terms of a complete solution we already mentioned, you know, we provide a complete package that has been vetted and tested as a system. So, you know, the installer doesn't have to kind of look at these little building blocks. You know, we've done that for you. So we've actually tested the functionality, the performance, you know, all the way from how sunshine hits the module to how you get power going to the grid or to your home. So, so that's been, you know, all verified, certified, tested, deployed, and, and we're excited about, you know, getting that rolled out into the market. You know, in terms of, um, you know, the uh, configurations, uh, you know, you could go from a, a part in the country where it's PV only. So you could buy just the inverter for PV. And, uh, but if you wanted to do grid support, you would add a battery. And then if you wanted to do backup, that's where you add the hub. So it's a very flexible system and, uh, you know, flexibility in terms of indoor or outdoor application. It, the battery could be floor mounted or wall mounted. And so what we ended up doing uh, is having a system where, you know, with just three components, you could do a lot of different applications, whether you are going back to an existing site that has optimizers or micro inverters on the roof, but now you want to add a battery. So you could do that with Q-cells. We could provide the battery that adds to an existing site. Or if somebody's looking at a brand new site, then you'll include the module and the MLPE and then make it a complete system. So those are, those are the flexibility stuff. And then from an installation standpoint, we made the battery system modular. And uh, when you go 10 to 20 kilowatt hours, these are battery modules that basically plug into each other like uh, Lego blocks, if you will. 
Yeah, very and, stackable. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no wiring needed, for example, between the battery modules. Uh, you just plug a battery module into the uh, next battery module and you, you put you put from two to four modules together with no wiring. It's all interconnected. And then, uh, you know, commissioning process has been very simplified to a smart device that uh, connects to local Wi-Fi. And then, uh, you know, you just go through settings and uh, go through, select the grid code and commission the system through your virtual uh, mobile device. So it's been made really simple to use. Yeah, and just jumping in here real quick, yeah, that design flexibility is something that installers appreciate all over the country because you you have different designs for different purposes, different applications, et cetera. You know, somebody with in a place with inclement weather or, you know, weather events happening, they might want a thunderstorm special, you know, just something that, you know, keeps the critical loads on at the house. Other people say, you know what, I have to have HVAC. You know, when we went to Florida, they said, well, we need to be able to back up HVAC because have you been here in the summertime? Yeah, Florida? I was going to say, have you been to Florida in the summertime? You need AC. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that. The HVAC is essential. So it is good to have that kind of design flexibility. And like Cam mentioned, too, we, we actually do have another uh, approved configuration uh, called grid support. And this is really, I think, specifically going to be used in, I, th I think it's going to be used a lot in California, where you, maybe people don't want to have a full backup system. They want a very fast install with a battery uh, where they could do time of use optimization. Uh, that's what the grid support battery can do. That's what the grid support configuration can do. So again, uh, you know, installers appreciate the fact that we have a, a really uh, flexible design here that could do a lot. For a lot of our installers, AHJs are paying a lot more attention to the 9540A testing series results. They're um, asking for letters from the uh, manufacturer that describe what installation spacing requirements should be applied to the product. What can you tell us about how your new uh, QCells ESS product, what, what the instructions are as far as spacing goes and, and what the um, 9540A test uh, series kind of like allowed you to to say in your instruction manual? Yeah, that's a great question, Aaron. And uh, again, just to backtrack a little bit, so the battery system itself has been certified to UL9540, which is the standard uh, that, you know, that we would meet. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, taking that a step further, our system actually has gone through the test procedure for 9540A or UL 9540A, which is actually a, a test series for thermal runaway. And we actually have a test report that sort of you know, has gone through that testing. So that allows us to kind of avoid the three-foot spacing requirements that certain jurisdictions have. You know, when uh, the system has only UL9540, you need to have a three-foot separation between batteries and components. And by going through the you know, test uh, process of 9540A, uh, we can actually uh, avoid having to have that three foot uh, separation. And, and that is something we have in our installation documents. That, that's fantastic to hear. I, 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 it's a real pain for, um, you know, installers who are out there working with AHJs that are watching those test reports closely, because it's not just, you know, three feet from each unit. It's like three feet from the windows, three feet from right. the access. It, it yeah. really can uh, create some challenges in finding a, a suitable installation location that'll allow the installer to install a system that's going to meet the size needs that the customer has if they need multiple stacks. So um, hey, you're, you're absolutely Absolutely right. I mean, I was just looking at, you know, some recent homes and when you start looking at the way the utility meters coming in and the panel board and the, the gas and, you know, you find out there's not a lot of space there. So, uh, and this has been a real benefit for, for, for installers. And, and with the, uh, like understanding that spacing, you mentioned that, you know, documentation and, and, and referencing those distances and how those tests apply, where could an installer go to understand these if they're new to Q Home or the core ESS, like where would they find this information and how would they get up and running themselves? Great. Uh, Jason, what we have is, uh, you know, on our website, we have a documentation portal uh, specifically to Q Home core. And uh, what we have is what's called a resource guide. And, you know, you, there could be a lot of different information somebody needs. It might be a data sheet or, you know, a, an installation manual or a commissioning procedure. And, and we've even created 3D, you know, virtual 
reality models that kind of walk you through how to install, how to wire it up, and then how to commission. So all That's of this, cool. con- <laughs> it's exciting. Yeah. And all of this content uh, is contained within uh, a document called the resource guide. And that resource guide will uh, give you some hot links that will take you to different documents. And, you know, with the documentation is something we spent a lot of time on. So, you know, for example, it, with this system, you could AC couple this to an existing PV only site. So whether it was a micro inverter or optimizer based system, we have application notes that are specific, you know, to the application, how to connect the system in that configuration. So that's where you would find the information, uh, you know, in the resource guide on our website. Sounds like a great resource. And and does that include information about how installers can get certified to install the product? What, what are the training and, and certification steps? What do those look like? Uh, you can go to qcellspartner.us. Um, and that's our, that's the home of uh, the Q Partner Portal. And it's in the training section of the Q Partner Portal, our certification guide. Now, everybody who wants to install one of these systems has to go through certification. Uh, otherwise, you don't have the, the firmware. We won't, we won't give you the code to, uh, to be able to commission a system. But uh, it, we do that as a, a customer service thing. We do that because we want to have a good end product. The end, the end user has to be you know, satisfied. We need an educated installer who knows and is certified on the, uh, the platform to be able to, uh, to, to go and do that install. We have that again. It's qcellspartner.us. If you go there, you can register as a Q partner and then take the course and get certified. All right. It, it's a, it's great, like all the different configurations that we talked about, right? Being able to do time of use and kind of having that lower cost system with the small battery all the way up to the whole home backup. Uh, when customers need additional support, whether they're on site or or just in general, how does that happen with uh, Q cells? All right. So Jason, that's a great question. And, uh, you know, that's a differentiator, we think, you know, we wanted to have, you know, an excellent product that's complete solution, right? But we wanted to differentiate ourselves from service, you know, people know the Q cells brand, you know, a highly respectable brand from from a terrific, uh, you know, company. Um, and uh, we have a lot of resources. So we have uh, an application engineering team where we would like to get involved with your customers, the installers, you know, the moment they think about a job site. And that means, uh, you know, contacting one of our application engineers. We have seven application engineers dedicated to this product line uh, spread out throughout the country. And they would uh, help with the design, uh, review single line diagrams, help to create bill of materials, and then do some virtual online training with the installer on do's and don'ts and and then uh, get on site when the installer is ready they've purchased the equipment and now they're ready to install and commission we'll have one of our local faes application engineers get on site and kind of jointly uh, walk along with the installer and uh, do some hands-on training uh, and walk through the commissioning process and and generally by the end of their first install the installers have become experts i mean it's an easy system to install and commission and just having the application engineer you know right there with you instead of having to make a phone call or get on a chat so we like to do that you know in person uh, but we also have uh, you know phone number and uh, uh, contact uh, that somebody could call and get remote support uh, and the beautiful thing is you know once the system is connected to the cloud you know to the internet uh, we have support team that could talk to the system from remote anywhere in the world and do diagnostics and, and get on a call on a phone and kind of walk the installer through any questions they might have. Yeah, that's great. Especially being able to, like you said, yeah, having somebody on site and also, you know, there's a lot of remote applications and remote areas out there. So, you know, having that additional uh, support and being able to phone it in is great as well. Yeah, and Jason, these seven people are basically application engineers. This is pre-sales. So they are actually targeted to support the installers to design, install, and commission. And then after that, after the site's been operating, if there was ever an issue, we have a customer support team. And and this is a team that's dedicated to, uh, you know, supporting you after the system has been operating. If there's a question a homeowner might have had on how to how to use the thing, how to get some data, or if an installer had some concern or issue, 
then our customer support team would uh, take the lead on that and uh, support you there. Yeah, and we, we, we do hear a lot about um, our customers dealing with AHJs that are just new to looking at sites that have or looking at project plans that have energy storage included as a component or as a you know main thing that's happening at the site if they're just doing a standalone energy storage installation. And so do you have any support structure for engaging with AHJs that are maybe pushing back against certain installation plans or configurations? Um, what, what, what does that look like for, for your team? And, and absolutely, Aaron, and that's an important part because, you know, if you look at places like Hawaii or, you know, other parts of the country, there's uh, all kinds of new code requirements and certifications coming into play. You know, so we have a compliance and certification team that's looking out for not only regulatory certifications, but also interesting new programs like uh, are coming into play, whether they're special incentives for battery uh, you know, or uh, VPP, virtual power plant platform. So they're kind of looking at that stuff. But the application engineers would support the installer in any kind of permitting issue. You know, we get on the call with the, with a utility if need be. We have relationships with the, the various large utilities in the country. And our application engineers are building those relationships, whether it's a local AHJ inspector or whether it's a, a utility, and they'll uh, support the installer in, uh, you know, walking through permitting processes and, and things like that. And we deal with that on a regular basis. As you've both, I'm sure, seen, California is going through some big changes. Back in, I guess it was April, April 13th, California made the change from uh, net metering policy 2.0 to net metering policy 3.0, right? And one of the aspects of that change was that it, it put a lot more onus on homeowners to make sure that any extra electrons that they're generating, you know, in any given moment on any given day is not being sent out to the grid for the most part, right? There are a few exceptions where the compensation is, is actually fairly decent. Um, but those tend to be much later in the day or into the early evening when the sun is probably not around. So there's a, 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 a big push, especially, you know, in California and in the, the country's largest residential market. But we're seeing similar pushes in other states around the country as well for similar policy changes. And it's really impacting decisions that installers are making around uh, energy storage system design and configuration. Um, I'm, I'm wondering what you're seeing on that front. Can you say a little bit more about how the system could be configured to give installers uh, access to a, a really great sales strategy uh, when it comes to the sale of like PV systems plus energy storage systems all under that single really well-respected brand name? Yeah, yeah, absolutely, Aaron. And, and this has been uh, kind of a a pretty, let's say, exciting disruption, if you will, you know, in Absolutely. the sense that the, you know, the incentives aren't as great uh, to have uh, solar only, right, where the ROI used to be a couple of years, now it's kind of been extended if all you do is put PV. So the benefit of battery storage, uh, you know, is being realized now. So, um, but then there's the added cost of uh, battery storage. And then when you start looking at backup and you, you're also putting in a transfer switch and auto transformer and a, a meter that goes into the backup interface, you know, it really adds up the cost. And so the, uh, the ROI was, uh, was not as attractive, but, you know, the utilities are, uh, you know, creating an interesting uh, incentive program to export utility, export to the utility at certain times of the day. So the, mm -hmm. this whole thing about, you know, in September on a certain day, you're going to get yeah. a lot of compensation, but the rest of the year, you're not hour. getting much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, what, so, so to make this more interesting for the installers, what we've done is, and, and what the market's been doing is, is to coming up with ideas on how to lower the cost of installing such a system. And so what we've done is broken this, what used to be a complete system into basically three components now. So what we've done is to offer a solution that's PV only, where somebody could very quickly have a you know, PV uh, inverter with modules and, and basically in different parts of the country, you know, that kind of works real well. Uh, but in California, to address NEM 3.0, what you could do is grid support only without having backup. So what that means is adding battery and then playing into the uh, you know, the equation when you can actually export uh, power on uh, attractive days like in September or 
you know, when the utility needs to buy power from you, so you can export or you could actually, you know, store the energy, buy it at a attractive rate and export at a beneficial rate. And then a third solution is to add the back, the, the hub to have complete backup. So somebody who wants to have complete backup, you know, is now only paying for it when they need it, if you will. So, so that middle solution in the middle, which is grid support, is intended for the addressing NEM 3.0, and that helps lower the you know the upfront cost and makes that um, a bit more attractive on the ROI side. Yeah, I, uh, I I I initially was kind of fairly doom and gloom about the NEM 2 to NEM 3 change, but what I'm seeing in practice is um, some really exciting changes afoot with um, storage installation architecture, other ways to implement cost saving measures, measures like you've described where you're limiting which components need to be installed for the solution to actually work and provide the type of service that is going to make the project economics as, as good as possible. But I think that in the long run, what we'll see is the same kind of commoditization of um, energy storage in the same way that we've seen uh, modules uh, commoditized and that will drive costs down of course but it'll make the technology more accessible as well to a wider field it'll drive up volume um, in a really exciting way so I, I think it's I think it's going to be overall a, a good thing it'll help show the true value of distributed energy generation right when you when you pair that with storage suddenly the the needs of the grid become very, very different. And what that infrastructure needs to accomplish becomes very, very different. I have gone from being a naysayer to pretty excited about the prospect of just seeing more solar plus storage installed all over the place. And Aaron, one of the interesting things is because this battery system is scalable, you could go from 10 kilowatt hours to 20 kilowatt hours or up to 80 kilowatt hours by paralleling system. If you're going to do grid support, might, you might choose to go only 10 kilowatt hours, so have a small battery uh, at a lower cost. But if you're doing backup, you might go with a 20 kilowatt hour or 40 kilowatt hour. So that flexibility sure. is designed in so you can enter this space and play at a lower price point. Uh, sorry, Jeff, you're going to. Yeah, I was just going to say that the economics of getting a battery have never been better. And the logic of having a battery has never been better in the state of California. And that was kind of one of the stated aims of NIM 3.0 was to, you know, promote batteries. And it is just inherently logical. I'm creating this energy. I, I want to keep it. I want to use it the way that I want to use it. And so it, it does seem to be uh, coming around. I was uh, also a very doom and gloom. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's just uh, glad to, to, to get out of that and, uh, and a lot more optimistic now. Yeah, that, that focus on the flexibility, you know, is a is an awesome thing that you guys are presenting, especially again, and there's so many different viable markets out there, you know, talking about California NEM. Are there any other are there any other markets that you guys are are looking to? I think I've heard several times kind of throughout out this um, you know, virtual power plants and and that kind of thing uh, being talked about. Um, are there any exciting things out there uh, that we could talk about um in other markets? Yeah, Jason, uh, great question. And, uh, you know, this system has, uh, you know, obviously a software interface, which, uh, which is used for installation and commissioning, but it also has uh, all the different grid codes that you can set for, you know, different parts of the country. And uh, so we've been working on uh, certain regional applications that are what you referenced as a VPP, a virtual power platform. It's where the utilities uh, or asset owners are aggregating, you know, uh, residential sites into a single uh, power plant. And uh, so we've been working in the Northeast uh, U.S. and, uh, you know, in Texas and, uh, you know, in, in some parts of California where um, asset owners are uh, taking our system and through API integration, being able to uh, control the inverter, if you will, you know, based on, a dynamic environment, they may want to, uh, instead of treating a single residential uh, small inverter block, they might aggregate to hundreds of homes and then kind of control that system. So there's incentives for the homeowner there to sign up for a virtual power plant platform. And our system also plays into some of those programs. And, you know, those programs are now just beginning to become uh, widely available in, but certain parts of the country, they're more widespread than than others. Maybe uh, Texas in particular seems to be in the news quite a bit. 
is there any partners or is there any uh, anything in Texas that we could talk about that would be maybe unknown to, to most of our, our listeners? Yeah, we do have a sister company, Chariot Energy, uh, that's based out of Texas. They are a retail energy provider. I think we have a talk coming up with them with uh, the Bay Wa Solar some Tech Talk. So I don't want to be the thunder thief and you know tell everybody <laughs> about Chariot Energy. You know, I'll, I'll let them do it better than than I could. Uh, but we do have some really exciting programs that we're working in the state of Texas with them. Uh, one in particular, uh, the Solar Buyback Program. See, I didn't know this about you know energy in the state of Texas. But there, there really isn't any net energy metering unless you you have a program like Solar Buyback, where you you enter into a net energy uh, metering agreement. You're basically just giving your excess energy out to the grid and not being compensated for it. So you do need uh, to have some sort of uh, thing like Solar Buyback offered through Chariot Energy um, in order to uh, to to get paid back uh, via net energy metering. That's that's super exciting. I, you know, that was I remember hearing about virtual power plants for the first time, maybe five years ago now. It's it's been a while. Um, and I was like, that's cool. But how long is it going to take for that to actually hit? And five years we're later, in the future. Yeah, it's, exactly. it's happening. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> fantastic. Well, um, Cam and Jeff, it's been really, really fantastic getting to catch up with you both. We had a, had a great time learning more about the Q Home solution, which we currently have available. So um, anybody who's uh, ready to check it out, reach out to us for more resources, reach out to your Baywa sales rep um, for information about uh, becoming a certified installer and getting your first projects under your belt. Is there anything else that either of you wanted to say as we're closing out? Uh, yeah, Aaron. I, I think maybe just to you know, just to summarize uh, what we've been talking about. It, it, this is a really exciting solution for the residential energy storage. First of all, it's a complete system. You know, from module to inverter battery to the hub and everything that goes in the system. Uh, so tremendous amount of flexibility, uh, indoor, outdoor, or you know, partial or whole home backup, uh, AC or DC coupled. And, uh, and then it's really easy to install, you know, very simple, quick installation, simple to commission and, uh, you know, completely dedicated support team, uh, application engineers and customer support. Uh, we're here with you all the way. Baywa is here with you guys as well, of course. You know, we've got the product on the shelf already. Um, our sales team is ready to engage with anybody that's um, excited to start offering this to their customers. Uh, it, it can't be understated how valuable it is to be able to offer homeowners a solution where the entire warranty comes from a single well-founded entity um, that's financially stable and not going anywhere, you know, totally committed to the U.S. market with manufacturing, you know, on the mainland and, um, you know, a commitment to build out other resources as well here. We also love working with your guys' team. You guys have a great sales team. They're a lot of fun. Um, you know, your, your R&D teams are all on point. So um, it's a partnership we really value. And I just want to say thank you to both of you for joining us today. It's been fantastic getting to catch up with you and learn more about the Q Home. We're, we're very excited to be able to offer this to our customers now and folks should reach out to learn more. Great. Thank you. Thank you to everyone uh, with the uh, Baywar team. And thank you, guys. Thanks, Aaron. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, that was a that was a super interesting conversation with those guys. And, and I love that it's such a modular system uh, and that we cover such a wide variety of applications, you know, whether it's NEM 3.0 and just being able to do, you know, strictly time of use with a minimal system or doing whole home backup. Uh, so, yeah, I really enjoy the flexibility of the product. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited about the, the modularity of the solution, too, and the fact that it's suitable for so many different applications. I, I'm a little bit more excited about the grid services end of things. So related to the deployment of those VPP solutions, I'm really excited about an upcoming conversation that we have. It's going to be a special sponsored podcast featuring our VP of product strategy, David Dunlap, and he'll be in conversation with leadership from our partners over at QCells. They'll be talking more about the um, QCells team's efforts at navigating that retail energy space that we mentioned with uh, Cam and Jeff in conversation there. They'll be taking a closer look at what QCells is doing in partnership with their grid service 
provider, partner, Chariot Energy, um, in states like Texas, where there are programs that allow homeowners to take advantage of those moments where the grid really needs the help from those batteries that are in uh, within the jurisdictions of those utilities. So yeah, watch for that podcast dropping into your feed in the next couple of weeks. But for now, uh, it's time for us to say goodbye. Jason, always great to catch up with you. Uh, great to catch up with you. Look forward to that uh, next podcast dropping. And see you yeah. guys later. We'll see you next time.